blood. The perfect place to hide. Hello, my name is Blake Rea, and this is Love, Death, and Dice. And today, we're making a bloody mess. You may or may not know, but I've got a pile of ghosts I'm slowly working through, and they all share a unique theme. What if ghosts can only possess physical materials like cloth, soil, and liquids? This week's material, you guessed it, blood. And what better model to use than the spirit hosts, their wispy bodies already having a fluid-like quality that will be a great starting point. I wish I could say assembly on these was straightforward, but I'd be lying. It was just awful. Every piece save for the arms and faces was difficult to orient properly, and the contact points were so slim that plastic cement was basically useless. I had to bust out some good old super glue, but I ended up using a bit too much, creating some rough patches where pieces connect. Just to give you some insight into how long assembly took me on these models, the chain rasps only took 10 minutes each to glue, sand, and fill. These took me 30 minutes each! Three times as long! But enough complaining. Now to make these boys bloody. I went outside and blasted them with a gory red spray. I wanted a dark, almost brownish red as my base to give the blood a slightly aged look. Two thin coats and you're good. Back inside now, let's talk science. Once your human juice gets spilled, it coagulates, forming darker, almost black clots. This is your platelets grouping together to prevent future bleeding. Kind of useless when you're dead on the ground, but perfect for guiding our artistic hand. Using Nuln Oil, I slapped on some thick coats all over the model, focusing heavily on the recessed areas where I think the blood would be most coagulated. This stuff takes a while to dry, so now we wait. I have a loose design aesthetic for my ghosts. The face is always brighter than the tail ends of the model. This is to help focus the eye on their expressions. Using more Nuln Oil, I coated the ends of the blood tails. The thought here is that this blood is the most coagulated and stagnant. The shadows are much richer, but we need to increase the contrast by boosting our highlights. Using my gory red base color, I painted the raised areas of my ghost, bringing back some of the brightness and saturation we lost in the wash. Once that dried, I busted out a brighter red and focused on the face and its immediate areas. The idea here is that the blood making up the face is fresher and constantly moving. Before basing all of my other materials, I took the models back outside for a gloss varnish. Blood is reflective, and a matte finish just won't do. Once the gloss dries, it creates a cohesive look between all of our different shades and gives the model a wet and sticky look. Perfect for blood. You tired of me saying blood yet? Yeah! I wanted my skeletons to look like the blood was sliding off of them. The best way I thought to achieve this was to dry brush on my bone color, applying it heavily at the base and then feathering it upward. Once the Thar Brown was dry, I went in for an additional highlight of birch, keeping to the topmost parts. Give it a wash of Seraphim Sepia and you got a great looking skeleton with very little effort. The candles use the same colors and wash, but I instead brush them on for a smoother look. Lay down some petroleum gray on your stones, admire your work while it dries, and try not to drop it like I did. Let's talk metallics. I have a lot of warm colors going on, so I'd like all my metals to be something cooler. I sponged on boiler black and then sponged on an even smaller amount of Stormhost silver at the dagger tips. I purposefully left the hilts and dagger bases red to give the impression that the hands are soaking them with blood as they grip them. The metals look a little too clean though, and because of how bright they are, I feel it comes off cheesy. I want to dial it back with some typhus corrosion. Using a sponge, I dabbed it on randomly. This knocked back the brightness and the added warmth of the browns helped tie it to the other tones going on. This is cool and all, but it needs some more zest, some more spice, some more blood. Grab your favorite blood mix and your most trustworthy sponge and cake it on. The one I used is a touch brighter than the blood that makes up my spirits, but that's okay. I figure that blood belongs to another poor soul entirely. Give a little love to the transition on the skeleton and these boys are ready for basing. I normally use muddy bases for my army, but I feel the dark browns would distract from the reds above. 
So instead, I'm gonna do a dark gray base with touches of brown. Scoop up some Astro Granite debris and smooth it out all around the base of the model. I did my best to avoid obscuring the rock detail around the skeletons, but I was too eager and I ended up clogging it, which is okay. I figure whoever this poor dude is struggled as their blood was peeled off of them. Using dark earth, I created puddles of soil around the bodies to give the bases a little variety and to tie them to the other bases in my army. A lot of this hobby is finding the narrative and letting that influence your creative decisions. Once both of those dried, I applied some null oil to darken the whole thing. To brighten up the higher points of the base and to bring out the detail on the gravestones, I dry brushed some rainy gray over everything. I couldn't tell you why, but the little worm in my head said to apply one more highlight of Nakar on the edges of the base, keeping the center of the base somewhat darker. We have a problem, a simple problem, but a problem nonetheless. The way this model was sculpted was to imply that a soul is being stolen from a corpse in the ground. That's not the narrative I want to tell. I want it to look like a person recently slain rather than one who has been buried. The best way to solve this is a pool of fresh blood. I wanted to try something I've never tried before, UV resin and ink. Grab your favorite sippy cup and pour in some UV resin and add a drop of red ink. Mine looks a little too bright, so I added a drop of black ink and immediately regretted it. It was way too dark and it almost looked like oil rather than blood. During take two, I used a drop of Nuln oil, which gave me the shade I was looking for. This stuff is surprisingly watery, so it flows nicely out of the cup, and to get it into all of the nooks and crannies under the skeletons, I just tilted the base and swirled it around. One touch that I thought would be really cool would be to add a couple dead leaves to the pools. It's kind of serene in a morbid way. Using a UV flashlight, I locked in my blood, making them rock solid. Place down a couple more leaves and dead tufts, and these ghouls are ready to go hunting. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something cool along the way. I have more ghastly paint jobs planned for you in the future, so make sure to subscribe and check in in the comments below every now and again. My shop is always open. Till next time, go raise the dead. <laughs>